<laughs> Alright, let's get out of here. Okay. Alrighty, so we are less than 12 hours away from the start of the M2O. Um, just here in Honolulu at this like janky little terminal that runs the tiny little domestic flights that take you to all the lesser known islands. I think it's just these little planes where there's probably like, I don't know, 20 people on the plane. But um, yeah, here, I think there's a plane over here. But yeah, I just thought I'd give you a recap. Um, we've put all the time in now where we've downwinded probably close to 30 kilometers every day for the last three weeks. Um, leading up to that, we were, I was foiling back home every day, not putting in that many kilometers per day, but at least getting out flat water practice, everything. Um, so yeah, I think now we just got to enjoy the race and um, not think too hard into it. I was lucky enough today to be taken to the finish line, which looks like probably the most brutal part of the race. I think it's over 2Ks from China Walls, the point, into the kind of bay where it finishes, where it's practically flat water. Um, checked out all the reefs where you got to kind of navigate to try and get the longest glide you can in. But um, it's going to be interesting. I think people are going to choose oils maybe that you wouldn't use for the open ocean uh, to try to get further than what they would normally on a race oil at the end. But um, yeah, I'm going ahead with my little prototype that Unifoil have made me and um, it's provided pretty good results in the last two races from the M2M to the Paddle Mill. So I'm sticking with what I know and um, hoping for the best. But yeah, gonna be honest, like definitely nervous. Um, last night, just trying to get all my stuff in order, um, get all my stuff organized to give to my boat captain because he drove over in the boat from Oahu to Molokai. Um, I got told not to do that just because the boat ride just takes it out of you. But um, yeah, he's arrived, he just messaged me, said he's there. And, and yeah, like definitely the nerves were, were kicking in overdrive last night, just cause I just didn't want to forget anything. Put so much time into this that like, I don't want to make a stupid mistake about like forgetting a mast or forgetting my paddle or something. So I was double checking, triple checking, making sure you know, I got my nutrition ready because over, I think on Molokai, I don't think there really is food options. So I was just kind of getting everything in check, uh, making sure I don't forget anything. But yeah, now we're all locked in, so we'll see. <laughs> I'm from Portugal. Many Hawaiians have Portuguese names from the time of the sugar cane and the pineapple. Is that you? Okay. <laughs> 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 Okay, so this is the island of Molokai. Uh, it doesn't usually have all these boats here, but these are all the support boats. Uh, this is the safety briefing. Um, it's just where all the competitors are the day before, talking safety and uh, giving us a nice dinner, which was prepped by the locals. So it was kind of a nice calm before the storm, all the competitors hanging out. I actually just only thought of this now, but if for some reason there was like a crazy food poisoning, all the competitors would have been fucked. But um, no, the food was great. It was lovely.
I flew in just then, yeah, yeah. So I haven't even seen like, so this is the start here obviously. Is it? Just off the point? Oh, like where all the boats are? There really is nothing at Molokai um, when they say it is super localised and not many tourists, they're being right because um, when we flew in it's very, uh, yeah, just like plains and grasslands. We're gonna have a little stretch roll. Have some breakfast and then what, 6.30, we gotta pick up our trackers? Oh really? I might go get my tracker then. I guess I just need to know my... Good morning. Yeah, okay. I'm 130. Yeah, it's kind of an adjustable strap. So Put it on your leg or your arm or something? Uh, yeah, up arm. arm. Okay. You can do this up and then this will adjust. You can kind of push that off once you get this to work. Yeah. yeah. Lovely. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. Yeah, have a good race. And then is there something I need to give my boat driver? No. Um, so you, you just wear this? Yeah, you guys are just Okay. So, Perfect. All right. Yep, and stop and prone on the boat. Thank you very much. Yeah, of course, guys. So, it's the morning of the event. Um, I think even if it's windy here, it's glassy, but it's beautiful on this side. It's like, looks glassy out to the boat. And then a bit of texture kind of after that, which is what, what I was expecting. Um, night last night, surprisingly slept all right. Um, yeah, got to sleep all right. But yeah, woke up probably around one or something can, um, having kind of weird dreams probably just anxious dreams and stomach started feeling a little bit rumbly but that's just the nerves um, but yeah alarm set at 5 30 and gonna have a bit of a stretch now and a roll something to eat and get the day started <laughs> for a long time very frightened <laughs> Gonna fucking get it done. Proud <laughs> moment right there. So I didn't mention that actually, um, Three days before the race, my knee actually fucked out. Um, I've had a dicky knee that I've been kind of looking after for the last six months, and I kind of just stopped everything three days before and just rolled the shit out of it, iced it, and just had my fingers crossed that it was going to hold up. Is this something special? Publish eyes after. No, it's just the 150. Lovely. 25 tail, 32 mass. Yep. 32, huh? Yeah. Yeah, nice. The bumps are just so gnarly off of the walker that... Oh, wow, you went real thin. 17 and a half. Is it tippy? Cool. I'm not an expert at flatwater, so... Yeah. Dude, I still can't even flatwater mine. No? No. I'm just hoping for a boat wake, or I'm just going to paddle out to the bumps. 
Yeah. Yeah. I'm or, sure you get up at Tongs the other day, no? Nah, nah. <laughs> Going out? No, that was the other kid. Oh, was it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just um, hoping for some superhuman strength. Yeah. For I'm some reason, the gun goes off and I'm like, ah! <laughs> I think I'm going to give it one shot and then battle. Yeah. I'm in like no rush because I know if um, a lot of crew are riding like the 150, hey, and like that type. So mine should be quicker when we get in the bumps, but yeah. we'll see. Yeah. I think it'll make a big difference in the smaller stuff. Yeah. So I think once it gets big, it's like, it'll be... you can drop down the face, you, that's how fast you go. Yeah, yeah. But you've probably tested it, huh? Like the 150 can hold speed. Yeah. yeah that's pretty good. I've seen what Cole was saying, like he was like, yeah. Is that a normal production? Uh, that's a full proto, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, know it yeah. I kinda wish we had another iteration of it. I would have tweaked a few things, yeah. but it is what it is. Yeah. It goes good. It did well in the last few races, so I'm happy. This is the Poulet ceremony that was a super special moment of the race. Um, everyone gets together in this big circle, holds hands, and you just feel this energy that um, the local Hawaiians are saying some special words to kind of give us good luck for the race and that everyone gets there safe and sound. And just to pay respect, I guess, for the, the elders of the past, the present, and the emerging. And um, yeah, special moment. What's going on? Sleep right? Yeah. Nice. Woo, you just made it. <laughs> no, I think we're going to, um, we don't start till like 9.30, so we might just, are you, like, do you have a plan out there already or no? Just hang for a bit? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, come up to our um, apartment and just hang out. Justin, this is Christian. Hi. Hey, Christian. How are you, buddy? Christian's uh, escorting. Ah, uh, yeah. yeah. Nice. <laughs> oh, perfect. It is. Good morning, mate. Harley. You feeling good? Alright. Fuck yeah, let's do it. Better? God, yeah. Oh, yeah, bro. That looked like we just woke up. What do you mean? <laughs> hey, Kahala, how are you, bros? I've had a stretch, I've had some really? breakfast, yeah. Yo, can I put Thank you. It was to you too, man. Yeah. You got this. Thank you. Tomo, how are you? Nice to meet you. 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 Nice to meet it wasn't bad. I, was I folded it in half, put it in my board. Ready? Do you get a paddle? Yeah. I got a spare two now. Oh, I got two. Yeah. 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 The paddle works. It was dog shit. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Where, where? It? Lovely. <laughs> it's all about that. Ready to go. Ready to roll. <laughs> where are you guys staying? On the boat. Oh, are you? Is that why you just got here? Right. We're on the next level. Yeah. Was it alright to sleep? Yeah. Sorry? Sweet. Nice. I had to this like $40 mattress. Well, Air mattress? No, no, it's just a foam mattress type of thing. Yeah. So I fold it in half, put it in my board bag, had my pillow, slept on that. Sweet. Love it. That's cool. You'll be alright? Did you? Like, you know, yes, I have. Sick. It was almost standing waves down there. Holy fuck. I was like a crazy bay run. <laughs> hey, Jimmy. Morning, mate. You <laughs> ready to roll? How are you, mate? Very good. I'm ready to go. Have a break. No, you should have seen his brekkie, he was hectic. They cooked up a storm. Good <laughs> morning everybody. 
How's everybody? Morning, mate. Yeah, everybody feeling good today? Yeah. Ready to roll. Yeah, let's fucking get get off our legs. <laughs> Shit, a nice bath. Just like not be standing on soft sand. Yeah. I want to say good day, Jamie. Sorry? I want to say good day to Jamie. Surely, I've seriously nervous right You'll be right, dude. Who are you in? You've done all the work. I don't know. It's time to roll. <laughs> uh, I've done like half a year. Yeah. You might need this to move I've done 25 miles, but it's like another age. Yeah. Oh man, it's all the same. Well, actually, it's only like 28 miles. So yeah. Up to, and then it's another three miles. Yeah. You'll be fine, dude. Put it this way, we're scared. She gets in there and it's Exactly, I'm not competing. It's not different for Josh. What do you mean? Because you're trying to race. No, I'm not. I just want to get there, bro. Okay, well, then you and me have like, the same goals here. Yeah. Because we're just trying to complete Dude, it. Dude, this year is just like setting the, the bar. And then next year I'll know what to do. I'm not trying to be like Andrew. Yeah. Or yeah. James. Yeah. James is trying to compete. <laughs> yeah, but James knows where to go. Yeah. He right, he's, he got, he's got a bit of experience. <laughs> yeah, so tell us, this is the morning of the Molokai to Oahu race. How was your journey to get here? From Oahu, it was pretty fun. Got a boat over. So, um, it was bumpy. But weren't you had it on a flight? Yeah, booked the wrong day. <laughs> <laughs> yep, so that's a, off to a good start. Yeah, great start. Um, then the hotel was booked out. Also a great start. Um, so I just ended up standing on the boat that I got came over with. Like a catamaran, was it? No, like a speedboat thing. Oh, yep. But I just went to Costco and got a, a $40 foam mattress and folded it up and <laughs> yeah. put it in my board bag. <laughs> it was alright. Yeah. I zipped up my board bag and slept in my board bag with a pillow. <laughs> wow. Yeah, Nottage said he was doing the same thing, just in his board bag, hey? Yeah. yeah. Fuck. Not the most... Uh, did you sleep? Yeah. yeah. That's good. I had a heap of um, melatonin. Passed out to like 3.30 when I woke up. And I've been up since 3. But, um, it's, uh, this is going to be really interesting. Mm. I feel like the longer we wait, the better it is getting for us. It is. It's, I feel like it's getting windier, for like sure. It's, it's like little white cups moving. They're obviously going away from us, but they're starting further and further in now. It looks like the wind is going this way, right? Uh, oh, like diagonal, it's 45. Not, it's not going where we want it. Yeah. It's going like down there somewhere. Yeah. And we want to go that way. But I think when it's this light, it's creating those little bumps. It's actually easier to go across them. Yeah. Because you don't want to go straight down there. You just go straight over the top. Yeah. Of it. I guess they are, but we did from just out here all the way down to the bottom of the island, about six miles or something. And, um, it's just like a bay run on steroids. Well, but you had to go across them. You couldn't stay with them, otherwise you just gone straight through them. Over and over. Yeah, right. Over, up and, over. and what's the schedule been this morning? There was the uh, prone paddlers you left first. Yeah, they were at seven. Then the subs just went then. They were at eight. And then, what's their teams at 8.30 maybe? Or nine o'clock? I think there's one or two categories before us. Right. Or maybe they were all just... Because there's only a couple of sub guys there. Yeah. That many people. Mm. I thought there was canoes and stuff. I don't think there's canoes. I think there's just like the relay teams that you're talking about. Oh, okay. And then um, 9.30 is... Wing and... Wing and sub foil. Yeah. yeah. It'd, be, uh, it'd be sick to see the wingers. They're just going to be going so fast. Yeah. 40 kilometers an hour? Averaging? If they can handle it, yeah. it's going to be hard on a wing because it's so lumpy out there. Yeah, just going up and down. Up and down. <laughs> Having a mask long enough to yeah. not reach. Yeah. Damn it. Sweet. I'm, uh, I'm psyched to go past to some of the prone paddlers and you give like you. All, all the other. <laughs> there's so many people already gone. Oh, yeah. Sweet. The, uh, the prone paddlers that left this morning are like on the horizon. Yeah. Yeah, you can barely see their support boats. Yeah. I don't think you'd be able to use them for direction, but... Do you have a directional plan? Like, do you have a GPS or your uh, boat captain said he's going to tell you where to go? No, I got, I got my eyes. 
big eye on there. Yeah. Same for that. <laughs> I can't see it, but yeah. I can already see my land marker. Cool. There's a, um, I think it's called Fort Locker. Or Fort Locker. Fort Locker. Fort Locker. Fort Locker. Fort Locker. Fort Locker. <laughs> There's a, that's the island up, that's the mountain I'm for. Okay. Because... Which is Coco Head, right? Nah, uh, it's the one... To the right of it? To the right of where we're going. Yeah. And then there's also Rabbit Island, which is... Very much to the right. Very much to the right, and you'll see that as a separate thing before you get there. And then as you get closer and closer, it's going to start being hit by the corner of Oahu. And then once... That vanishes on the left. Right. And downwinding. That's a good hot on a, tip. On a 45 towards the finish line. That's a good hot tip. When we came out of the boat, that seemed like it was about five miles from China Walls. Okay. Yeah. That's good to know. So maybe even just past that. Yeah. But like you, that's a good, good zone because you don't want to get too close to there because there's so much backwash coming back out. Yeah, right. And you don't want to, I feel like there's a waste a lot of time going at it and then turning left. I think with the backwash it creates these wedges and it slices all the, the sweller mm -hmm. and you want to be able to sit on swell, go over your backwash onto the swell behind, come back, quarter back away from where you're going, hit another swell, come back across, hit the wedge, go over. It's like, <laughs> it's wild. It's, uh, I've been, done it, did a run or two. Practicing it, and it's yeah. it's like going from North Bondi to the Sydney Harbour on steroids. <laughs> it's so hectic. Maybe like a hundred meters off the cliff. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then you don't want to get too close because the wind dies. Yeah, yeah. But, I don't know. A couple of hours one day. Yeah. <laughs> don't say that. <laughs> Got enough sun cream on. Here we got the front runner. <laughs> I heard um, you've got a little secret weapon called creatine. Oh. <laughs> I mean, that's what they call it, but it's kind of one of my Chinese steroids that I picked up when I went back to Hong Kong. Yeah. Is it legal? I don't know if it's legal, but it's been working pretty well. Like, so the results are, are showing. So. Fucking out they are. Yeah, I doubled my dose today. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm on the aminos just trying to recover. Just because I've been feeling so burnt out the last few days. Yeah. Have you been downwinding? Or you yeah, just kind of backed little, off a bit? Yeah, a little bit because I saw the forecast and I was like, I probably should ride a bigger wing or try something different. Yeah, yeah. Because all the other races we've done are pretty much starting in the bumps. So. Yeah. Yeah, this is this, different. This looks like a really long way to pump. That's my biggest worry. I feel like when I get to the wind line, I'll feel so much better. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's a grind. What do you think about the, the distance to the wind line? Dude, I'm, I don't have the board that can allow me to, or the skill to flat water my foil. Yeah. So when the gun goes off, I'm going to give it one red hot crack. Yeah. And if it doesn't work, I'm just going to paddle out to the wind line. Yeah. Like, I've already accepted that. Yeah. It's unfortunate, like, you know, I'd love to have a really long skinny board and just be able to yeah. do it, but I just don't. And I'm not going to sacrifice riding a bigger wing yeah. because I want to enjoy it, dude. Yeah, like, have fun, you need a small wing. Yeah, it's going to be epic in the, like, after a mile, it's going to be amazing, but yeah. I'm not going to fully sacrifice it just for the first mile of shit. Yeah, I totally agree with that. But, um, hey, Annie, you all ready to roll? Yeah, make sure you haven't forgotten a screw or anything. <laughs> Ready to roll. Yeah, I'm gonna go find your escort boy. Yeah, my, I've, I um, gave my stuff already. Oh, okay. Yeah. I should probably do that then. You should do that. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. <laughs> I've learned that lesson too many times. Yeah, thanks. Hello, how are you? I'm Josh. Josh, my mum, Robin. Lovely to meet you, Robin. Yeah, likewise. You're the support. Yeah, I'm the support. Oh, Try not to trip over the paddle. <laughs> Don't break the paddle. <laughs> yeah, I'm walking across the rocks. That's the scary. The guard is interesting. Yeah. It's flat. It's flat. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm gonna 
give it a crack at paddling up and if yeah. it doesn't work i'm just going to paddle yeah that's it i'm not going to i'm not going to force it yeah yeah exactly. no point trying to burn yourself and you don't want to just go full red line no nah. and get out there and just be like whacked in, yeah feel just i reckon even if i did for some miraculous reason got the flat water but then had to pump like a kilometer out yeah I'd be cooked by the time I got out there. Yeah. So like, yeah. especially on the foils we're on. We're not on like big foils. That's, that's it. Yeah. That's kind of what I'm, like that wind line looks. At least we had a bump. It looks small, small, Yeah. Small we'll have the wind behind us. I'm I'm even planning on like just getting pushed by the wind. And yeah. Even if it takes me that way, and then and then cut. And then yeah. cut. Yeah. Yeah. You're gonna paddle heaps easier with the wind than you are. Yeah. Totally. Going against, going against it. it. And then once you're on foil, then make yeah. the cut. You make that ground up too much quicker. Um, the Where they went for the prone? Yeah. Well, they can't and cut, so they have to. Cut, yeah. 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 That's what we were saying. It's got to be a lot of cones. Yeah. Um, hang in the shade if you want, or you're gonna go. You're just gonna do it. Go yeah. Cool. We'll one. see you out there. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Right, boys. Let's do it. M2O. Yeah. <laughs> All the best, Andrew. All the best, Andrew. Yeah. You got this. You put in the hard yard. No, you got the wrong board. So Perth and I literally had the worst start ever. Um, I didn't even attempt to paddle up, but um, as you can see here, that's boat weight. See it all just going everywhere. Um, Perth then just decided to get up and have a crack and it was amazing. It was so encouraging to see him do it because paddling up's not his strong foot, but um, he nailed it. And then um, just after this, it psyched me up and I paddled maybe another minute and I did the same thing. So yeah, we were literally last. All right, off to a horrible start. I started off on my stomach because I knew I couldn't flat water this foil up. And then everyone took off. And obviously mental games, I was like, fuck, I just fully lost the race. And then I had a lot of struggle getting up and paddling up. But we're off now and cutting right. Whew. It's like a bay run here on a really small race floor. But yeah, here we go. Make up some ground, I'm doing 2 minute 30 k's, I'm happy with that because I'm cutting severely right. Um, I didn't realise how hard the cut was, but it's all good.
Mozzie's looking out to me. Look at him. Still cut and right, we're about 33 k's in. Um, yeah, it's not as gnarly as I thought it was gonna be. I thought it'd be like bigger out here and wilder, but still similar to like a Maliko, I guess. All right, we're getting pretty fucking close. I can see Coco Head clearly now. So I'm just shooting a straight line to there. Wow, the last 10 k's was horrible. I understand now what everyone was saying about the backwash. Fuck, it was gnarly. Super hard, but got through it. Here we go. Heavy, I just had a fall. <laughs> a fucking like one kilometer away from trying to walk. Oh well, just lost two positions, but this chap just fell down too, so I just got him again. It's getting wild in here again, a lot of backwash. <laughs> Out there. Oh, okay. I'm gonna wait Que pedem para não morrer Não, São João Não quero vê-las na fogueira Lenhadores Que é o descanso dos meus pássaros Cantadores Que pedem para não morrer As três tamarinas Fazem sombra azul Pra noite e luar Pros casais solitários Ilumina meus olhos Não, São João 
não, não quero vê-las da fogueira. Lenhadores, que é o descanso dos meus passados. So once again, get on down there to uh, pull away, get yourself some, some butcher, turn the brews out there, get yourself a little bit to eat, stay hydrated and keep that sunscreen on and we will give you our shingo. Alright, I just want to say a few words. The, um, the race is over. Um, that absolutely destroyed me. Um, did not think that it would be that hard, but it actually is. Um, gear choice was wrong. Tactic was on point, uh, kind of chose like a pretty good line, I think, but you're severely cutting right just to stay straight. Um, when I say gear choice was wrong, you don't need to be on that fast of a foil because you're just quartering right the whole time. So it would have been better to be on a bigger foil, being able to flat water start with the rest of the crew. Um, that would have just gained me heaps. And then also just help a little bit at the end um, coming into coming into Coco Head, but um, all in all, an amazing experience. Really tested everything that I had, and um, I'm just glad to say that I completed it. And I'm stoked for everyone. I'm super stoked for Jimmy. I knew he was going to get it. In second place, Hatton from Hawaii with a time of 3.15.03, just one minute ahead, Chip Nelson. Here he is, well done Chip. So then who won? I don't know, but he won the edge of the feet. Find out soon. Oh, the silver flop. <laughs> Not competitive. <laughs> <laughs> He's to be up there. And your champion today hails from New Zealand. Army. You would imagine they are some of the greatest sailors in the world. They know how to work the wings, they know how to work the sails. In the time of 2.55, he was 20 minutes ahead of his competition. Absolutely incredible. Army Armstrong! Competition today. This was also tightly contested. There was only four minutes between our first, second, and third place getters today. This category is uh, deemed to be one of the most uh, competitive out there. And today, 
It showed us that this skill level of these athletes is absolutely incredible. We spoke to a couple of the athletes afterwards. Uh -oh. Not only were their quads cramping, but everything was cramping. It's a very demanding sport. And today I just want to tip my hat. So once again to all our foil athletes out there, give them a big round of applause. All right, in third place today, representing Hawaii with a time of 2.23.04, Eduardo Tanis. In second place today, let's give it up for the time of 2.21.05, Oscar Johansson. I'll sell. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. In first place today, 31 year old with a time of 219.02, winning by two minutes and three seconds today. He's also a stand up champ. James Casey! Ladies and gentlemen, our category winners here in the Women's Open and the Men's Open divisions in Subfoil. Well done, brother. Well Thanks done. You did. <laughs> yeah, no. Fuck yeah. You did it. Well done. It's over. Well done, Annie. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. I know, I was about to say that. Let's go into our next category in the overall top top solo. Team out of the back here. Let's go out with the number 755, 32. Team out of the back here. Yay, 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 DJ. <laughs> uh, you'll probably put it on YouTube. I'll give it to you. <laughs> no, I love your stuff, you know that. <laughs> okay, Josh. Um, we're going to start with a question. So, Lisa... <laughs> um, they saw a really low moment for you. We'll start with a lot. Um, <laughs> just tell us how you felt Couple of um, I had expelled all my energy in the channel. Um, I actually had a really good run after my terrible start. I didn't fall at all until about three k's to the end. Um, so I'm really impressed. But um, as I came, yeah, three kilometers to China walls, I did the line that I think the sup and home guys do, they get really close to the wall and they just hug it. And I think that was a bad call for the foil because right against the wall, it's just a washing machine. It's just backwash and blood's coming from everywhere. Yeah, and in that last three kilometers, I made three mistakes, fell down three times. And it was so hard to paddle back up. It was so hard to even just stand on the board after being so fatigued after um, like 50 Ks or something. And yeah, so I, I eventually got to where Simon and Lisa were hanging and I got like a, the plan was to get away, try and navigate this bit of the reef where you kind of got to go in and out of these bommies and then continue onto the pillars that James was talking about. And like, it's all good and well to keep that, like have a plan. But when you've got zero energy and you're coming around that wall and all you're doing is like doing the stock standards down bit where you're peeling off to look for the next bump behind it. But then all the bumps disappear because it turns into a glassy offshore bay. And then you're just pumping against this headwind. And yeah, I came down like literally right under Simon and Lisa. And I think they were yelling, go kill me! <laughs> and I was just like, head, head down. And I just, I think I just looked at him and I just go, I've got nothing left. <laughs> <laughs> like, 
literally, and I was, I was with my uh, Portuguese mate that I was like head to head with uh, in like the two other races. It was really cool, like we just had a really special moment. I think he came down as well and um, he just came up to me and goes, bro, this is crazy. And we just like, we hugged and I was just like, man, we're doing it. We're making it in, we just got to paddle now. And he like, he had like a big kalama and he just started his paddle in. And I just waited next to the wall because I was just like, there's still a chance to catch a wave here. I'm a terrible supper, so I don't know what I was thinking. But I was like, I was just sitting right under the wall because I came out the day before on an e-foil just to suss out all the bombies and reefs. And there is, there's like a wave that kind of pushes up, wedges against the wall and then pushes down to like these uh, next little bombies. And, um, and yeah, I just sat there because like there was big lulls between the sets. And I just sat there and it must like it felt like an eternity, but I don't know how long it was. And then um and then Simon yells out, there's a wave! <laughs> so, so I got up to my feet and I'm like full just like wobbling everywhere. And then I just start paddling, like I'm I'm, I'm terrible like flat water starter, and then I started paddling and then bang like the wave like wedged up against the wall and then just shot me sideways and I'm like, whoa, I'm on foil. So then I just did like the perfect like I felt like a local, like I started zigzagging between the bobbies and I think I overtook two people and I was like, oh yeah. And I I start pumping and then, um, and then yeah, I made it to like uh, that pillars wave and came down and started paddling. And then there's another wave called seconds and I paddled to there. Did the same thing. I was just like, I was on a 7-2, so relatively pretty small board compared to the rest of the field. And I just waited there and um, uh, a wave popped up. And I remember this other Aussie kid who was next to me. I started like getting to my feet and he was just like full head down paddling. And I yelled out to him, I was like, dude, there's a wave, get up. And then like, I'd seen him, he kind of looked and like, he stood up, but by then I already had like my, my, my momentum. And I, I was lucky, I got, I got the wave and made heaps of ground. And I think I took over another two guys. And then, and then there's like the channel markers. And then from there, it was literally just a paddle in to the beach, which was probably a good 15 minutes. And I was exhausted, like paddling on my chest and it was just like my lower back, everything was just going. So then I, I switched to like standing on my feet again and just paddling. And then um, I've got bad knees, so I wasn't doing like the clubby paddle thing on the knees. But um, yeah, just did like a slow paddle in and made it. it was pretty, pretty proud <laughs> moment, I'll just say. And so, is it like, you know, you get to the point and you're exhausted, like, is it everything going? Like, like what? What does that crossing do to you? Yeah, it, it breaks. You're a reason to Yeah, no, <laughs> it, it definitely breaks. So, like, I, I think I definitely underestimated how hard the race was. Like, I think it's really good going to Hawaii in that month. Like, you do that M2M that like Kissy was talking about. Amazing downwind race. Like, it's fun. Paddle Nua, it's more like a sprint race. And then I was just like, yeah, I've done like plenty of 50 kilometer downwinds here in Sydney. Like it's, it should be like, you know, like relatively a walk, walk in the park, but it's, it's not. Like I was not prepared. I was not like what Oscar was saying. I'm not the fittest dude ever. Like pad, I couldn't, I can't flat water start. So I couldn't pad, um, pump out to the, the wind line. And, um, and then yeah, like I just didn't have the endurance in me to continue after that 15 kilometer crossing to then pump into the headwind. So I think back to the drawing board, I would definitely change a few things and uh, make it easier for myself. I think I, I definitely um, probably thought my skill was better than what it was. That's usually what happens with me. But uh, yeah, I would definitely change a few little things and make it easier for myself next time. Um, and so your your boat did stick with you. Yeah. Um, yeah. I actually felt really sorry for the boat because, like, you, you know, you paying you paying them amount. They're doing like this big uh, effort to bring the boat to Molokai, and then I'm just watching them, like me at the end, like I mean, not the end, like just at the start, like paddling off my chest, and they must have looked at me going, "This dude is spoiled." <laughs> <laughs> They did get to start their motors up um, yeah. after a few, after a couple of k's and a bit of uh, just paddling. Um, tell us about how you marked your line, or, or you know, how did you actually manage that crossing as far as where you wanted to go, what you were looking for. I mean, <laughs> you're seeing it. Like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I think I, I 
Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, I, like, my my downwind experience is probably not as good as the rest of the boys. I'm probably doing it the least out of everyone. And I come from, like, a surfing background, so when I downwind, I mainly, I just surf down the coast. These boys, especially Perth, they just go straight, they go super fast. Like, they're just bombing strong. Um, Kissa gave us a really good recommendation that I recommend to everyone here who's doing runs that they haven't done before. It's like called a run line. Um, it's on Garmin and I think Apple do have a version as well. And um, what you do is you set up on the computer uh, the route that you want to go and then you load it onto your watch and it's literally like a car navigation. Like it tells you where to go, how long you got left and if you're off the track. Um, highly recommend that. That's the line that I took. We just did like the straightest line from the start to the finish. And um, even with me doing that and me doing my surf style, um, <laughs> I did 59 kilometers when it was, was it a 52 kilometer race? <laughs> 53, yeah. So, and like if you look at my line zoomed out, I'm straight. But if you zoom in, you just see it like this. <laughs> yeah. So that's kind of, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, true to character. You know, just because yeah. it's a world championship. <laughs> Change anything. Um, cool. And so just tell us about, um, you know, your ambitions for following years and, um, and yeah, like what you say, you are you happy with the equipment? Like, you know, what, what you would change or how you would change your approach to it and what your goals for it are in the future. I, um, I really enjoyed that month in Hawaii because I've never really done any like races or marathons or anything like that. So it was really nice to set a goal and um, train for it and be super focused. And if I could recommend that to anyone, I would, because like, even if you don't want to win the race, it's so good to just train towards something. I learned more in that month than I have in a year here in Sydney, just because over in Hawaii, conditions so similar every day. You learn your equipment. You also downwind with really good people, and they're like, just good to learn off, try their gear. Um, but yeah, I was I was super happy with my gear. Like it, it works amazing here um, in Sydney. Um, You're allowed to mention the brand. Yes. Well, um, <laughs> my my um, my board uh, Amos the Sultan. It's like quite skinny, skinny and narrow. Like you guys probably know it. But when you match that up with what the guys were using over there, it was tiny. I probably had the smallest board in the race. Um, so I would definitely change a few dims there. Like what the rest of the boys said, I'd probably go eight foot by. 16 or 17, um, you're literally starting like in Narrabeen Lake. So you want a board, it doesn't have to be stable because it's flat. So as soon as you get up, you just don't want to fall. So get up fast, um, don't fall. I would probably ride a bigger foil. I was riding a 130, which is probably 800 square centimeters, you say so tall, 850 maybe. Um, I, would, I would ride. I would ride one definitely bigger because a if I flat wooded from the start, I think I would have gave myself such a better um, go of the race. Um, and then what I didn't realise as well is that we're literally cutting right the whole race just to stay straight. So I didn't really find myself ever bombing down swells and going with the energy. It was like, yeah, you would do like a little game of kind of snakes and ladders where you would go down a swell but then cut right straight away. So you never really were maxing out the foil or going as fast as what you would if you were going directly downwind. So in hindsight, I would ride a bigger foil because when you quarter right, you never really get your foil to a really high speed. So there's no point being on a tiny foil. You just want to foil the glides and you want to foil that you yeah, can get up in the flat pretty much. Um, and then also like what Kisses said, I did not anticipate reverb 10 kilometers out from the finish. Like when people said, oh yeah, there's backwash and stuff, I was like, can't be any worse than the cliffs here in Sydney. It like, I just was not expecting swells coming back at me, uh, ground swell coming from the right, a swell coming from behind me. Like it was, it was a washing machine. So um, yeah, it was, 
it was an experience and definitely learned a lot and I would definitely do it again next year. Like I remember I think Simon and Lisa asked me directly after I finished Ray <laughs> and I said there's no way I'm ever doing that again. <laughs> 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 you opened it up. I, 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 that was unbelievable. Yeah, I, you know, I ticked that box and I'm done with it. But you know, like, you know, a few weeks later, it's so cool to have that goal and drive towards it tune your gear like train for it and um i'm the same like i i don't i don't i don't want to see the race change i love how it's hard because like you like i think all of us here who downwind we could all go to maui and do m to m tomorrow without any training like it's it's a really good race and i'm not dissing it like it's a great race but it's not particularly hard m20 is fucking hard like it's a hard race yeah sorry the french Josh, I was so stoked to see the month you have had there, um, doing the, you know, all the downwinds you were doing with all the local crew before, and I know that you got right in amongst that community, and were really, um, like, that was stoked to have you there, as you know, as stoked as you were there to, to be there and hang and hang with them, um, and yeah, so to see you do M to M, and then um, and do really well, um, and then the Umuwa and this race was a really cool thing to see you, I guess, the, the goal come to fruition. So, congratulations and so forth. Cool. This is epic. Like, I've been in the surf community for my whole life, and the foil community is where it's at. This is epic, and I love it. Thanks, Sam, for putting this on. This is great. Appreciate it. That too. Thanks, Sam. Um, and I gave him a call a few weeks ago. Um, I didn't expect to be doing this actually. I just thought I was giving him an idea. Um, I've been to um, you know have some people in the shop, and um, it's yeah. I'm so stoked with um, every time I come in here, gear, gear you guys look after us all, and um, there really isn't like this is unique. I hope you guys know that. Um, and long may it continue. So thanks, guys. And thanks for